Hello, good morning. Today we're going to talk about transferring a design and I know some of you haven't got access to a light box or um, even a glass top table which would be fantastic um, if you've got one um, because that would be most useful. You could put a bedside lamp or an ordinary re reading light underneath the table, shine it up at an angle, put your design on the top, put the linen over the top of that and trace it out. But I know a lot of you use the window, which is not my favourite um, option, but we have to do what we have to do. So uh, this is um, to use your stash up that you might have some spare linen or a different fabric that you could embroider on. It doesn't have to be cruel work. I do all sorts of dips, different embroideries and I'm going to show you what I need to do to transfer the design through the window. You might have a design drawn out in pencil, something you copy or something you design yourself. And um, I'd like you to go over with a Sharpie or a black pen and make it really obvious so that when you shine it through the window, you can see that. So I'm going to go over to the window and stick this up. Now I use the ridgy side of the linen and it doesn't really matter which way the weave goes. I'm just going to pin that up as well, hold it up as much as I can. And I'm using quite strong tape, sort of double-sided tape this one, but it's just whatever you have in the house. And I've got a lot of ready sharpened HB pencils. Um, you never want to use a blunt pencil and all you need to do is actually go from the base and try and, and draw as much as you can from your elbow instead of your wrist and just stroke the fabric so the, the pen is at about a 45 degree angle to your linen. So if you see I'm just doing quite a wide mark there and just take your pencil round the shape like that and that's all you need to do and then you will end up with go back to the table what I did earlier and this is the drawing so as you can see in my first attempt at this design that's finished on here <clears throat> and you don't need to do lots of attempts you can just go straight off um, I've drawn the outline but I haven't drawn the details in and you really don't need to do that uh, you can do that as you stitch along and I'll show you how to draw the lines in that are normally printed when we have our kits. And this is the unicorn design which I've drawn out and I've just got to say you don't need to draw all the lattice work behind. You just, um, I'll show you a way of doing that <clears throat> using the weave to actually help you with that scale. Now you don't have to do it as large as that, you can draw it out far smaller um, but you need to have some leftover threads and we'll start choosing them now. Now I've just had a FaceTime call with my uh, one of my granddaughters and she's the opinionated one because she's nearly six and she knows everything and I showed her that and she said but granny unicorns are white. Now White is not my favourite colour with cruel work, but I do have a stash of all sorts of different colours and we did find some greys which might do for the body or I could go for a greeny grey. So this is my stash of wools. And I just like to start grouping them around the piece so we can see what we might have available for these hummocks to make them look a little more natural and then have the unicorn or whatever animal you want to put on or design or snowman really pops out like the stag does over here. So as you can see on this one I've gone from yellow to green to brown and they're all similar in strength so there's no shocking change of tone. If you're going to make um, long and short soft shading a feature on this then you really need to have these gentle colours shading from one to the next. 